<laughs> she, she was a rich old lady, but she, um, she definitely had a commitment to the idea of understanding what's going on in the psyche. Okay. And so what she did over a period of 30 years was every year they would have a conference on some topic. So one topic was the spirit in nature. So this is Joseph Campbell's first volume of six that he edited on the Aronos concert, con, uh, conference essays. And so she invited like the leading intellectuals of the time. So she had Mercia, uh, Eliade, she had uh, Carl Kareni, um, who else would you know? Fritz Meyer, uh, Schrodinger, Schrodinger of Schrodinger's cat, uh, Adolf Portman, and uh, and there's there's another essay in, uh, in here called The Spirit of Psychology by Jung. So there's two essays by Jung. And this act, essay was actually not given in 1933. It was given in 45. So, but it happened to be the first one that Campbell picked to put into these volumes, into these edited volumes. Because what he did was he went through all the yearbooks. They, what they did was they took everybody's lecture from these things and they put them together in a book and published them. And, pardon? They, would be, they were in the library, at, you know, I was at the university, and then mm -hmm. going down that aisle, it was sort of like you turn the aisle and it was like, <laughs> and I looked down to them, you know, just barely understanding the titles, much less, and, and, and around them, there are that such a, you know, it's almost a new Yeah, it had a mythical, yeah. uh, and so during the war and during the Great Depression, she kept this thing going at Ascona, and coronavirus permitting, um, I'm going to this conference in April 23rd to 26th of this year. You know, I would have gone, but I had to put a roof on my house. Yeah, son of a gun. Well, maybe next year. I mean, this one may end up getting postponed, I suspect. Yeah, you know, because I... I uh, scheduled my trip into Milan, yeah. and I th I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have to change it because just today Pence, Pence says, well, if you're coming back from Italy, you're going to go through multiple screenings. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and, and stay in Mexico till we're done with you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have that piece of bread of Daniel Yes, Thank certainly. You. Oh, my gosh. So, so anyway, the very first essay is this phenomenology of the spirit in fairy tales, and there's several parts to it. Okay, I'll, let me read off the parts. We can split it up. Concerning the word in the word spirit, that's first thing, and then um, self-representation of the spirit in dreams. Then the spirit in fairy tales. Um, that's three part part three. Then I haven't read it all yet. Uh, theriomorphic spirit symbolism in fairy tales. Now theriomorphic means animal spirit symbolism. So you know the the wily fox or whatever it is. Right? Um, Okay, so that's four parts, and uh, I guess that's it. And then there's a postscript. But anyway, it is heavy going. <laughs> it's like every, every paragraph is. And, you know, one of, the, one of my pet peeves about the Jungian analyst community is that it's very insular, and the Jungian societies are really intake organizations for Jungian analysts. You know, 
let's separate the weed from the tra- chaff and find those people that can pay $150 an hour for our services, you know. And, and basically, I think that's what they are. Okay, and so my pet peeve is we all need to understand this stuff, okay, because we all destroy our lives one way or another because we make mistakes. You know, like I made a mistake when I left my first wife, okay, because I didn't understand psychology and I didn't understand what needed to happen, okay, and I, I had developed along because I'd been in business and I'd had to do a lot of stuff in Japan and so on, and, but my wife was expecting me to be her father, which I wasn't, I couldn't, okay, he was a brilliant man, and he was a brilliant uh, entrepreneur and so on, but I wasn't, but he loved his house, and what what she never understood, I don't think, I mean, I got it because I didn't meet him until I was already 20, but she didn't understand that when she was one year old they moved into the basement of their house and he built the house around them okay i mean he he literally had some professional set the foundation of this house and then he built the rest of the house around them okay so did that he built it with logs like yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it was a very nice house, and it was beautiful. It was right on the Niagara River, and you know he loved that house, and he he loved driving his right on uh, lawnmower in a day when not everybody had one, right? And and so he was the sort of the classic millionaire guy who was the rich guy in in the neighborhood, right? And and I just never was going to be that because I'm allergic to everything that's gr- that's green and grows. And I remember one time being out on their on this hill pushing a push mower up the side of this <laughs> up the side of this hill that he had on his lawn and. I got into the sneezing fit, and I have this power mower in my hand up above me, <laughs> and, and I I collapse. Yeah, and I have and I have this thing f- flipping around. <laughs> I, no, no more. I'm not doing that. And so, so when we came back, when we came back from Japan, she expected me to do that. And that was never going to happen. But I didn't understand that she needed to make a transition from being her father's daughter to being a mature woman who was my wife. How could you have midwife that? How could you have helped her become and no longer be the daughter in need of a father? Well, I mean, we could have talked about it for one thing. <laughs> really up to her. Yeah, I mean. You'd have to hand her her shadow. Yeah, and. and of course, she's gotten divorced. <laughs> well, and I, right, and I, I don't really know, honestly, but by the time, uh, by the time I met Debbie, my wife, um, and we are. We think we're the first couple to meet online and marry, okay? But by the time I met Debbie online, it was already too late, okay? I was already gone, and I was just waiting for that soulmate to appear, right? Which she did, okay? So in four months, I shared emails with Debbie and after four months, I knew her better than I knew my wife of 17 wow, years. Interesting. Right? And, and so that's what we're missing in our society. And so that's one of the big reasons. Authentic communication. Authentic communication. And, but 
it has to be communication based on understanding what's supposed to happen, you know, between a husband and a wife, between understanding that, you know, we're going to go through these transitions in life. Jung called them transformation, symbols of transformation, right? And well, we've each got to figure out our own part of the deal, though. You know. Yeah, we have Joanna, to. She thought I, when she would get angry, she had a script she adopted from her mother, and because her father was an alcoholic, she would scream at me like I was an alcoholic, and I go, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> Who are you talking to? Well, my my problem was that my ex-wife would would gin up every argument that we had had since the first day we were married. Okay, and you just can't do that. No, you I mean, can't. I, I had to establish that after about eight or nine years of arguing, and I hadn't realized why. The reason I couldn't win a single argument was because of that. Right. Because all the old resentments came right into the now. Mm. Well, this is why you should read about the animus in the woman and the anima in the man. Of the course. spirit in woman, the tr spirit of truth in woman is the animus. Mm -hmm. And in the, the man, the soul is the anima. Is right. that because they're from Venus and we're from Mars? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, as Some you, as, from Uranus. <laughs> as, uh, as Jürgen said, the the husband would draw his sword of discernment, and the wife would throw her net of yeah. net, net of poison, <laughs> and whatever it was. But get that. well, there's that's the animus right there. Yeah. Right. Well, well, and you're saying that. And, and you said something else I want to come back to, but you're saying that. How can I do that? Barbara Hannah. She has a book. It's two volumes, Animus. Okay. I look for it. Thank that you. is an excellent book. Because I'm not sure I'm ever going to meet another person again. Would you like some more? It's one of those books that I still, I have to, I have to really stop and sink into it because the, the complexity of, of the, the male-female dynamic is really tough to hold out here and look at because you keep getting sucked into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. Debbie and I... And it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Debbie right. and I made a pact <laughs> that if, <laughs> if ever we have an argument, mm. then once it's yeah. over, it's over. Um, it can't be mentioned again. And well, see, you have little boundary things. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that's that, so that's important. The, boundaries are so important. That's the answer. But nobody s tells you this when they're teaching you or when they're trying, getting you ready to get married, mm -hmm. right? I never right. had a pastor say anything like that to me. No. Okay. But, and I, ne I, you know, I never had a pastor say, well, you're going to have arguments. Mm. You know, uh... You know, why did they you always say, say good luck? <laughs> yeah, they say good luck. And, you know, you're going to be good to one another, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, can I? Of course. Can we just get to the wedding night? <laughs> can I ask something that you mentioned earlier, Bill, about Skip? And I don't know whether you were being tongue in cheek, droll, or whether there is something truly that I all don't know about. All three of the above. All three of the above that I don't know about Skip. But uh, Bill said to you in recommending the uh, essay that he just gave to you, right. he said, I know that you're really um, into the alchemy side. Mm -hmm. Was he being funny or is, what, is, what does he mean by the alchemy side? He just side? went through the whole... <laughs> well, I, 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 ju I just taught um, two seminars in the advanced reading group on alchemy, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and sort of half a one in the in the online reading group that we do when when we're not here, right? And, and what does that mean to you, alchemy? Pardon? What does that mean to you, alchemy? Well, it means alchemy. individuation. Yeah, it means individuation, but mm -hmm. but the alchemist didn't know that's what it meant. But but what it meant was that the alchemists thought that they were finding the spirit in matter. Okay, so they thought that um, they knew about magnetism, for example. Okay, and they knew about um, 
Oh, everything because it came through material. Every, all spirit is in material. Right. It's, it's uh, physis, physis or physicists or something capture spiritists or something. Right, right. And right. everything has some sort of spiritual. Right. So the, so the alchemists thought that they were communicating with God and finding in matter things where there's spirit. So things that are spirit are magnets. So, you know, you take a magnet and you put them one way and they come together and separate and they repel, right? Well, there's a kind of jellyfish that'll attach itself to the side of a ship and and it literally will sink the ship if you don't take them off the ship, right? And so that spirit that's attached attaching that jellyfish to the ship. So that sort of thing, they were aware of that sort of thing, even in ancient times. Okay, so what they were doing was fooling around with matter to try to find the spirit in it, because they knew there was spirit in it. And so in the process, they invented chemistry. Okay, in the, but in the but from a spiritual point of view, because they were working on spiritual things, they also invented psychology, but they didn't know it. They never knew it, but that's what they were doing. That's fascinating. And the most interesting thing you missed last week was my insight, I'm which sure. was, <laughs> um, when I was reading uh, alchemy, psychology and alchemy, I suddenly realized you know, because I always thought, where's the history of art? Well, you were here. Maybe. Yeah, and I said, it, yeah, you night. were, because I said... Oh, you mean last month? Yeah, last month. Oh, I can never forget that insight. Go on, remind me. <laughs> 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 but I have always, I always thought art, you know, was really... The history of art is really the history of design, because, you know, the Pope says, do this, do that. And so every... All the... the the it came from the outside. It, real art comes from the inside. And so the nice thing about alchemy is that it was purely from the inside uh, when it wasn't charlatans, and they were actually mapping out their psyches. And so basically, that's what uh, artists are, as opposed to designers. That's what art is. Of course, it. It goes on this back and forth sliding thing, how much of it is design, how much is art, and how much is art. But, you know, like the abstract expressionist, like, um, uh, oh, what's her name? Well, de Kooning's wife and... Uh, Hockney? Hockney? Uh, maybe. Yeah, probably. Because you, you can actually use uh, figurative things to make art. Mm -hmm. Though... Uh, a lot of people are just doing it to, because they know it's more appealing than people will buy it, which is because of reasons from the outside, not being, you know, coming from the inside. And actually, when you're doing what the alchemist is, you're an artist. And so that's why I think a lot of artists um, uh, are so poor, <laughs> because they're really not trying to sell anything. They're trying to map out their own psyche and mm -hmm. save their own minds or something. So, well, it's a, it, a different motivator. It's also yeah. why a lot of artists come from wealthy families, <laughs> especially uh, like some of the women. You know, the uh, I can't even think Frankenthaler and um, uh, uh, who's the one who was up in Baltimore from. Uh, I think she was from. Sh Oh, um, uh, the Grace part of the, the crazy coon yeah. cone Grace sister. Oh, the cones. The dizzy yeah. cone sisters. And the, that, well, they were, were, they were collectors. Yeah. yeah, they were collectors. They were. They were. Rich old <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were just. <laughs> you, you know about this, right? Mm -hmm. Up in the Baltimore Museum of Art, there is the cone collection. Okay. So these. So um, Gertrude Stein and the Cone sisters were all lesbians, okay? And, and uh, Richard Stein's partner was Alice B. Toklas, right? And so they all lived together in Paris around the turn of the 20th century. And 
it was a time when Picasso and Monet and all these guys were coming forth with new art. And, um, and so they were buying it for a buck three fifty, right? And they were collecting it away. And the Cone sisters were the daughters. Uh, I mean, they, w they weren't frivolous women. Okay, because Clarabelle Cone was a medical doctor and one of the first medical doctors in Maryland, okay? Um, and they were real smart. They were real smart. Well, right, and, 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 you know, Gertrude sort of summed up um, the whole essence of spiritual searching, okay, in one poem, which I'm going to recite for you. <clears throat> there ain't no answer. There never has been an answer. There ain't going to be no answer. That's the answer. <laughs> that was Gertrude Stein, right? I, <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, these these three ladies, Gertrude Stein, well, Alice B. Toklas was involved also, but so those four ladies sat in Paris. They had a salon, and they collected all this art of Picasso, and Monet, and Manet, and all those guys, and they the Cone sisters were the the daughters of the founder of the B and O Railroad, the Baltimore and Ohio, right? Because here we sit at the head of the Chesapeake Bay, right? And so the way to get into Middle America was to have access to a railroad that went from Baltimore up to Cleveland and then connected with the Transcontinental Railroad, right? And, and that was the B&O. So the Cone sisters were the daughters of this guy, right? As I recall. I mean, that, that's sort of the story. Um, I, I'm not swearing to the facts, right? Except the, their names, Clarabelle and Etta okay, Cone. I think that, to answer your point, the point is being that you have to be wealthy to be an artist if you truly are. Or a collector, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you go up to the Baltimore Museum of Art, which I highly recommend. Yeah, I've been, but I've Okay. So, so there's a room called the Cone Collection. And if you go in there, that room is worth several billion dollars. Just that room because of the things that they collected at that time. Okay. And uh, it, it's it's just decapitating. It's yeah. amazing what they have. Um, and and one of the cool things that they have is a um, they have a holographic uh, tour of Gertrude Stein's apartment. Okay, <laughs> and that's awesome. I mean, you cannot imagine because they. They literally hung all the paintings on the walls, and and so you get into this this virtual reality thing, and it's like you can walk through her apartment, and and the stuff that you see on the walls it, it just boggles the mind, right? and um, so I mean Alice B. B. Toklas got famous because of Woody Guthrie, but but. Um, but she was actually the wife of Gertrude Stein, <laughs> right? And um, so, anyway, and the and the Etta, Etta and Clarabelle Cohn never married either. So, um, but the the four of them hung out in Paris for years and had had themselves a good old time. Okay, gentlemen. Sorry, we're talking about the um, the um, Tony Wolf. Tony Wolf. Will there be a time? And, and, and we have to do your thing, and I want to do your thing. I really want to do it, but I want you to get into my psyche. I want you to get me get into one of my dreams. Okay. Either afterwards or now. Yeah. Okay, right now, let's go. <laughs> okay. Five I minutes, dreams. though. I have, it is very short, very short. I woke up in a sweat on, uh, on Wednesday. And I was saying, Daddy, 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 uh, my dad and I had a violent relationship. 
he used to beat me with the side of his hand. Not with the knuckles, because that would show too much, so it would be the side of his hand. He beat me with this area here, which was less... Uh, you know. uh, I was in my dream inviting homeless people to come and stay in the house, homeless vagrant people. I had just had a conversation that day with a man whose son had stayed at my house for three days and then disappeared. Went to see the father. The father said, yeah, I'm sorry, my son's been diagnosed with schizophrenia. He's, he does this thing. He goes and signs up to live with people and then he disappears. He's, you know, you're the 30th person. He's done that to it this year. Okay. And I was very compassionate to the father. <clears throat> anyway, it visited me that night because in my dream I remember seeing these people with all their worldly belongings on their shoulder in a trash bag and my father was kind of I don't know whether he was protecting me from them or punishing me for inviting them in but then the funny thing is when I did woke up with the sweat I saw a ghost run across the end of my bed but the ghost was running on linoleum linoleum, linoleum. A, a, a kind of wooden floor or a lino floor mm -hmm. and I'm carpeted in the bedroom and I knew in hearing the ghost run it seemed like a little girl or a little a small slight figure I think a little girl just running from left to right quickly mm -hmm. frightened the life out of me mm -hmm. but in fact I, I rationalised it oh well it's this that's the uh, and I got back to sleep pretty soon it was a little girl Hmm? Little girl, or hey, the little girl. I don't know what her visit was about. Okay, no, go on. Go but what I'm saying is that, is that what woke me up was the memory of my father, maybe protecting, maybe punishing. Maybe the same. The homeless people coming through, maybe the same. But then this vision of the little girl running past, running down the corridor outside my bedroom. From left to right. Yeah. Um, well, this little girl is an anim figure, mm -hmm. um, and um, but it's an, it's, an, pardon? it's it's a, a little girl. It's an anim well, figure. I mean, anima. It, anima yeah, figure. but it's <clears throat> it, it's like um, uh, the divine child. Okay, it's it's your it's your. Um, yeah, but why would she appear? I and mean, that, that's what interests me because it's like. Suddenly, you regressed to where you're. There's a there's a child animal, not an adult. Right. But it's, I regressed and, to my and it's your father is, is part of that, and you're in that thing where he's protecting, punishing you, and which is my teenage years. I'm talking <clears throat> 45 years ago, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. That you had the dream. No, I had the dream two days ago, three okay. days ago. Yeah. But. Um, he did, he behaved like that frequently when I was in my mid-teens. Okay, mid but, but yeah. mind you, this character in your dream is not your father. The okay. character in the dream is some part of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, because all the characters in your dreams are part of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not anybody else, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, uh, you know, there's part, one part of yourself that seems to be beating yourself up, mm -hmm. right? And and this this anima little girl, which is is your soul. Well, the anima know. also is the it, she lives in the in the space between conscious and unconscious. Mm -hmm. So coming from <coughs> left to right suggests she's coming from the unconscious into consciousness. And I was awake when it happened. I mean, right. that's interesting you said that, from the unconscious, because I was semi-conscious. I had awoken from the dream at that point, I heard it go mm. And right. that's good. Yeah. Mm. Because it's never happened in the house but before. Okay, I, I normally make a rule that I don't interpret people's mm -hmm. dreams, right? Um, That's okay, it's brilliant. Huh? But I mean, as a friend, as a friend, I'll do it. I'll just suggest you not he's getting near any sharp objects you know, after with, he leaves. No, <laughs> with the understanding that I'm not a mental health prof professional, right? Well, it's not but, recorded, right? Well, it is recorded. Well, that's okay. I, I, I just want insight. I'm going to ask my therapist on no. Thursday also. Okay. Go ahead. So, so what I <laughs> think it is, 
is it's showing you that your divine child, which is this creativity part of yourself that that Sandy's going to talk about mm -hmm. later on this evening, um, is still alive in you, notwithstanding, you know, some part of you, you know, th thinks that you're being whipped up by your father, mm -hmm. and and your father in a case like this is is yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a part of you that wants to be born, that wants to to. Can you say where it started again? You were in a house. I I was. Well, funny enough, I was not in my house. Mm -hmm. I was in the house that I was as a teenager with my parents. I was in that house because I was looking out of a window of that house and I saw these homeless people coming with a trash bag and stuff in that house. So I wasn't in the mm. house I live in. But then when I woke, obviously, I recognized where I was and saw this figure run past. Well, to me it suggests, I don't know what the homeless people are about, but whatever they're about, it's you're not ready to accept it mm -hmm. because that's why she was immature. And she came to consciousness and it scared you because you weren't ready to you weren't ready to understand or, or you weren't able to handle what the homeless people mean to you. And I'm not sure what they are. Uh, unless well, those yeah. are parts of yourself that haven't found a home. Or yeah. back then, and I'm thinking right. when you're a teenager and so suddenly, figuring out who you are and how many mm -hmm. parts there are and how to make sense of that yourself. Yeah, you're I mean, suddenly worried that you haven't gotten some part of yourself together yet and that's scary. Well, you haven't gotten a chance. I mean, <clears throat> what I would say to you is you have to let your father go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, the fact that you're telling a story of and here I'm telling a story on my first wife, which isn't fair also, but, um, you know, you're telling a story about how he used to hit you and such, and you haven't let that go yet. No. Okay. And and you but have see, to. You have to move on. I don't think life. that's the issue. And, and, <coughs> and what... It's just one... You know, the, this little girl is, I think it's is a, it's a symbol, the divine, yeah. yeah, it's a symbol of the divine child it, it's not something. That, that wants to be born in you. And I don't know what the divine child would do in you, okay? I mean, it might have something to do with music. It might have something to do with soul collage, for all I know. Or soul collage might help. I'm hoping that it yeah. will this evening. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so, uh, but. Thank you. But the fact that the, the little girl is running out of your unconscious into your conscious suggests that divine child wants to be, wants to come into your consciousness and, and you know, change your life in some way. And, you know, you have to decide what, but, you know, what seems pretty obvious is that you're, you have to let... It's part of your midlife crisis. Yeah, you have to let your father go. Okay. 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 Your father's dumb. He's just a symbol man. Yeah, that's right. He's Ash or... or it's the homeless people you've got to work with. That's right. Okay. And and actually, I didn't bring out this picture, but uh, Jung was very much into the Kabiri. Okay, so the Kabiri were these little creatures, uh, little people, right? And... Actually, on the stone, on Young's stone, are you familiar with this, the stone? Okay, at Bollingen, which was his hideout, okay? So he believed in creativity, right? And he created through his whole life with painting, with all kind, with writing, with uh, stonemasonry. He liked to work with stone a lot. He right. He hacked away at it all the time. Right, and so... So for 12 years, he built this house in Bollingen, which is on Lake Zurich. And he didn't plumb it, and he didn't put electricity in it. It's, it's a building. And he said a medieval person, if they ever came into that house, would be totally comfortable with it. The only thing that they would find that was from the 20th century was the matches, 
Okay. Otherwise, it was he was trying to live like a medieval person because he wanted to engage that part of himself, right? Well, a medieval person in a stone house would have probably had servants. <laughs> right. Right. So so anyway, he one of the things we wanted to do was to build a, a fence around the garden of this house. And when he was doing that, they delivered a big uh, stone from the quarry via the by ship, okay? So it comes down like Geneva and they can bring it up to the shore at his house. And and uh, the stonemason that was working with him wanted to send it back. He says, no, no, that's my stone. So he brings it ashore, and when he's 75 years old, he carves three sides of it. Okay, so now on one side of it is this little guy, okay, who's, who's wearing a, he's wearing a hood and a cape, and he has a lamp, and that's Telephoros, and he was one of the Kabiri, and so he's a guide, okay. So the Kabiri were actually psychological concepts, co you know, um, complexes, that in ancient people, they were envisioning them as little people, okay? And the Irish still talk about leprechauns, right? The little people, right? Well, so those little people, historically, in Greek times, were called Kabiri. And so several of Jung's paintings have Kabiri in them. And the stone has this, has Telephoros, who's a guide through the ages because he lives in every life but he he goes on and keeps living mm -hmm. even though we come and go mm -hmm. and and so you know he wrote on it you know this is Telephoros who lives in every life but he goes on after you're gone mm -hmm. type thing is what he said in his, in his stone it's interesting mm -hmm. um, but you have the floor. We, we, you know, in fairness. Okay, so. We're a small crowd tonight. Yeah, so Sandy is going to do a soul collage with us. I don't know how we're going to show this, but we're going to do our best. Yeah, if we can, I guess, narrate parts, but. Right. Yeah, we will need to move around. So I'm trying to, you know, kind of streamline this. So, um, yeah, we have about a little over there. Okay. So, uh, what I thought would be um, that we just work towards one card and um, you can take a look at some of mine. And, oh, sure. Um, if you're interested, you know, there's ways to add on, you know, creating more than just one card. And um, you can end up determining which category they fall into and working with those categories. But for tonight, I think we should just focus on one card. And essentially, um, what? Reminds me of Anais Nen. A what? Anais Nen. Anais Nen. You know mm. who that is? Mm -mm. I've heard the name, but. There's a House of Incest, and she has a whole bunch of mm. photo montages. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's anyway. An Anais Nen was the lover of Henry Miller. Miller, yeah. And she wrote terrific erotica in the, mm. in the 1930s. It always comes back to that. <laughs> she wrote women's erotica. She, she wrote women's erotica. And so if you don't know Anais Nin, look her up. <laughs> Buy some of her, so, of her books. Um, so, so that being said, <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's okay. You just reminded me. Um, so, one of the <laughs> bless you, one of the main um, guidelines, you know, is that the cards aren't anything to sell or barter, and you know we respect the work of others, and that's what's you know we're working with to create this for ourselves. And essentially, we are looking to find out what needs to come up. So I don't want to say too much before. These cards were done by you or by other yes, people? Yes, by me. So um, many people have many more cards, but I'm just starting. And um, so I just want to explain there are four categories of images, which mainly come from different ma magazines. 
and um, they, the magazines are cut up and I work, as soul collage facilitators do, to remove as many words as possible because words can end up stagnating the image. Mm -hmm. So if you create a card without words, then it can evolve for you and you can you know, see different things over time rather than being stuck on that one word that might be shown. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is look for a background that seems to jump out to you for some reason. And there's backgrounds on this corner, or this table. And um, to keep things simple, I think um, it, on the background, you then want to go to the other three categories, which would be people, objects, or animals and insects. So then you're looking for an image that seems to just need to be picked up. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to give this too much thought, you just go with it. Mm -hmm. um, and you try to do this quickly and without discussion. Viscerally, hmm? Viscerally just mm -hmm. repeat it. Right. We're not going to use these though, are we? No, I'm just these showing just you. Examples. Right. So um, you can pick up more than one background and more than one image. Um, but think of the image as um, depicting an energy. So. Um, in other cases, when there's more time, you could have more than one image on a background, but it should always be of the same energy. So, okay. um, so essentially, yeah, just kind of let go of that critical mind and just rummage through the photos, images, um, see what seems to call to you for whatever reason, and pay attention to what is attractive or repels you. And... Um, there's probably a lot more I could say, but I think that's... <laughs> so we're going to go to each one of these things mm -hmm. and Pick find up. images that, that move us in some way or another. Are right. we going to snip them out or are we just going to... Well, then you'll come back and you'll kind of sort oh. to decide what do you okay. actually need to gotcha. work with. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to censor yourself. You can just pick up you know, what seems to be calling to you and then mm -hmm. come back to, okay, what's my background? What is the energy I'm going to work with? And you know, then we move forward with the actual collaging. So, okay. so um, is, is there any instruction about what you mean by energy? Um, the energy you could think of as um, the so it, to kind of put soul collage in a succinct um, description. I like to think of it as vision boarding before you know your intention. So it's still a mystery, but you're going to see what seems to call to you. And, um, you know, you're just going to go with that, essentially. Okay, so and then I, we're going to end up collaging and reading that card to determine what is this energy? Why are these mm -hmm. backgrounds together with this image? Right. Okay, so, and, so this is a way to um, connect with the irrational side of our psyche, with the arrows. So it's possible. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can only give you like the lay we, person's Why don't we analyze the Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, so... Um, irrational. <laughs> well, I mean, it's irrational in the sense that we're, know, we're taking it out of an image. Feeling center. We're taking an image and we're trying to... It's a loaded word. But, I'm, I'm yeah, that's where... Right now. You don't okay. Have, yeah, you don't have to go too deep. Yeah, just see what... Yeah. See what oh, what what's called what all about her, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. what we're called to, right? Yes. Well, you are okay. just in time. Oh, you are yeah. going to be the most innocent perception. <laughs> right, right. It's a long oh, day. Okay. Sorry. Oh. What are we doing? Sure. We're, we're doing so collage. Oh Can boy. We just stop? I mean, one. Yes. yes. So. Um, yeah, okay, just who's the background first? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't need to, and we only have one table each. But um, you know, just pick through quickly, like what seems to be something that is supposed to go with you. Did you say pick multiple images? Yes. Or, and you and said one of them is a background, or all of them are the background. Or? One is going to be a background, okay. and then one would be, um, you know, placed on the background. Yeah. And when you know when there's more time, then we can have companions to that main energy. Right. Okay. But so we're just doing a two or three images, right? Right, or even just one. Or sometimes oh. you find that the background 
doesn't need anything, and that's just okay. Fine. Okay, so each of us is supposed to go to a table, right? And pick something, right? And just kind of flip we through. At this table, we stay at this table and pick stuff from here. We don't. Walk you around. will walk around because you'll need a background, and then you just want to see of the different groupings wow. what seems to come to you. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's getting up. It will be better. Yeah, just kind of right. flip I'll, through I'll, them. I'll lay up here. It doesn't need to be first. Okay. And there are specific, there's a specific group of just backgrounds. So you may not end up sticking with your first choice. So, Sandy, this feels like divination in a way. Did anybody ever say that to you? I mean, it's like, it's in a way, it's kind of like tarot. It does feel that <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Lovely. I am several It's lovely. It's like the the cone sisters. My animals in this picture. Yeah. Collect away. And that wasn't on the animal table. We're animals on the table, huh? Green bees. So we're not gluing these things, and we're not taking them with us. We're just no, you are. We're trying to interpret you're, you're choosing what's choosing you. Just um, try to put away your critical side and just pick up what seems to be either right. attractive or repulsive. Something yeah, that brings up a strong... Only two pictures or any number of pictures? Um, no, you can take any number at this point, and then you'll come back and whittle it down okay. to one or two. So if I may, I would say you may have spent enough time at your first table, and you could okay. move on just to keep it yeah. flowing. Run along. OK, run along. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you, Ravel? Were you on that one? Uh, uh, I was on those two. I've been on three of them so far. My goodness. All right, I'll, I'll put this on. <laughs> All right, okay. If you're, if you're happy with, you know, what you have, you don't have to go around, but I think it's good to see, like, what's out there and yeah. what else is yearning for oh, attention. Man. Give me Susan Sarandon. <laughs> She's my girl. She is a good one. I mean, I don't recognize any of the other people in this, in this pile, but this is I got her right for it. Now. Finding them. So you're, you're just looking through your, your magazines, and every so often you find something that's really amazing and you cut it out. Huh? Yeah, or I just cut out images because They're they may be amazing to someone else. <laughs> I do, of course, create my own collection of those that really speak to me, but... Right. Those are great. Yeah. 
It helps you kind of look at magazines a whole new way, too. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, like, all this art is out here, and, you know, yeah. really fantastic. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to show um, um, some of the pictures that I've and This was what, animals? Mm-hmm. And then there's... What's this one? These are objects. And yeah. that's an animal or over there. Um, and sometimes if you see something that doesn't seem to fit, turn it over because it could be, you know, an intentional image that's on the other side. But there's, you know, always possibility for something better on the other side, too. I'm not saying anything about these yet, but there's <laughs> Susan. So what you can do is, um, yeah, so you can use this and just start kind of planning what seems to go together. And I think for tonight we could just do one card. Okay. So essentially find a background and find one or, you know, one or two objects or energies that seem to need to go on that background. Okay. And with the frame you can figure out. Um, you know, really the actual placement. Okay. So you're you're just letting your imagination and intuition mm -hmm. just kind of guide you through creating the collage. Okay. So, okay. Um, and I have cutting surfaces, cutting utensils, um, glue so sticks, of course. You don't mind if we cut these? No, that's what they're here for. Um, so, so tell me again what we're doing. Okay. So now you. Take your collection yeah. and you're going to kind of weed through to narrow it down to one background and then one or two objects or energies that needs to go with that background. Okay. So you're, you're doing like the sifting, you know, of um, what you've picked up so that you weren't censoring yourself and now you're working through whatever, you know, really needs to be used from... Mm -hmm this smaller collection. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm checking about this one here. Okay, and then you can paste on any page, you know, use that as your surface just to... Tear out a sheet. Well, you can just use use this together, um, you know, just work on the surface when you get to the pasting part, just to protect the table. Ah, okay. um, And here's your card, and you can... What's this? My back, my... This is the um, structure that you're going to create the collage on. Oh, okay. So um, it's up to you if you want to use oh, the blue side okay. or... I'm beginning to see a process. Blue side or the white side, but um, this is, you know, your foundation okay. for the collage. I'll take one. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you need so I have this foundation. And this frame. And this frame. That helps you see what feels right in terms of the part of the background that needs to be cut out to the size of the card mm -hmm. and then where that other energy needs to go on that background. And we need to do that. That's mm -hmm. the boundary, yeah. isn't it? The blue, the, 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 that's the frame. Right, right. Reference. You're okay, limited well, to that size these ones at this point. Oh, no, yeah. These are mine. So this is what you'll be working towards. Okay. 
and All right, fine. Um, All right. yeah, I can take it. these so we can have more room. And I'll give you a sleeve, and you know, you'll have the start of your own collection. What is it we're working for? Um, you're looking to create a collage on one of these cards that I'll give you. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you have the background that seems, you know, to be the one you're that, supposed to use. Right. And then you're putting one or more images on that background in the okay. specific um, way. Okay. Right. Yeah. Specific way and using the frame to help kind of, you know, figure out. With, what part no, needs to be cut out. That's and where you're doing this. You right, know, like right, exactly. Yep. Framing it out for yourself. Okay. So, and I have this cutting. can be cutting for the object you can cut it you know as much out as you think needs to be on the card um, okay. you may like you know the background that it's already on or you want to maybe reduce to just you know a singular figure why well, I, I hate to take yours and surrender no it's yours <laughs> 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 it's kismet. Yes, this is, the, this is this is my background for tonight. Um, this this is definitely anima. <laughs> and I have a special place in my heart for Susan Sarandon. We're certainly getting that impression. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just that about her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a pair of scissors? Oh, yeah. That? Yep. And then I have an exacto knife, if you like. Okay, well, and I have this um, cutting surface, if you like. Okay. And, um, yeah, here's your frame. Well, um, Susan Sarandon had these two terrific sex scenes in... Sound like a. We knew that show like was going, right? We knew that. Yeah, what's that, what's that thing from uh, Monty Python and the uh, Life of Brian? And, uh, anyway, she says that thing. Sex, 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 sex. <laughs> <laughs> it had this terrific thing at my favorite name. Life of Brian, you said? That's Life, Life of, of Brian. Brian. I love that. And I you can use this to paste on top times. of, so you don't have to worry about, you know, okay. getting okay. it on the placemat. All right, terrific. So there's Susan. Okay. Yeah. So does she need anything else? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So she could be, I, you know, enough on her own, but I, I'm I'm getting enough, of, getting a little stick here. But, um. <clears throat> Susan. 
Affecting this image. Okay. Okay. Right. And then this you can paste on top of, and then we'll just break out that. Okay. You can cut on this. It's coming together. <laughs> saying this is brilliant, but... Thank you. <laughs> no, it's not brilliant. I did have an interesting... If you feel like you just can't decide, um, you're certainly welcome to take home whatever images need to be used on another card. So you can go home with some supplies. Oh. But just for tonight, we just need to create one. Well, I've, um, I'm not going to steal your. No, that's what your, it's. Uh, believe me, I have. Your ideal. I have enough that, images for everyone. Right. If you ask my husband, <laughs> he would, he would think it's a little overkill. But, well, that's good though. Yeah. yeah. I mean. So, but there's another step to this process. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, okay. once the collage is made, then we go through three questions. Okay. Or four questions and... Don't right. But you'll, you know, come to maybe understand why you put it together the way you did. Okay. That's fair enough. So it's the mystery. It's the mystery. The mystery of your... Well, Intuition. We know what, what is going on with Skip? His animus, yeah. His animus over there whispering loudly in his ear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whispering loudly. Yeah, we can all hear <laughs> It's so loud. <laughs> okay, where, where's the scissors to get? Oh. Um. Ah, oh, okay. sorry. That's okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, well, we're gonna, I'm going to steal the the rising sun out of this one. And even though it has flowers in it, I'm just taking the rising sun. Yep. get a painting going and then I'll start putting images up on the canvas uh -huh. fitting them in that I'll do them on my computer so I can scale them into place Of one type 
on the background that seems to be the home for it. Okay. And then we'll go through those questions to see why this is a whole why energy. they needed to go together. Like this is a whole different energy, obviously. Right. So that's where I was saying right. that you can't decide. Know that you can make this right. its own card, uh -huh. but just you know come to a okay. decision on what one card would be. Got it. Okay. And then you know this still is yours, and that's what you can go home with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take the flowers, which were on the sunrise, and well, I would like to. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to put together how I can offer this and where and you know who are the people to um, you know be interested. separate and I can separate right. them, but if you want yeah. any of them, you're welcome to them. Okay. that were under the sunrise, and I'm using Susan. Let's see. Well, it's a fun, fun project. It's, it, it, um, it forces you to go to your inner child, mm. which, which is not a bad thing. Great. Yeah, to really listen. So this is washable school glue. <laughs> you can eat it. it won't hurt. <laughs> washable <Yeah>. school glue. <laughs> <laughs> Some kids always had to eat it. Right. <laughs> yeah, the paste. Actually, your glue didn't taste bad. Yeah. <laughs> It's a heck of a shame that the, the guy that got the glue all over his face was Dr. Phil. <laughs> Somehow that's prosaic and synchronistic. images together for us. Oh, yeah. I just kind of have a growing pile. I have to supercharge each existing pile with some new energies. Mm -hmm. All selected intentionally on some level. All selected what? Intentionally on some level right. for this group. Well, I knew um, I mean, you obviously get something out of it just selecting them. Yes, I do. Yeah. It's kind of a guilty pleasure. Yeah, so it's a, it's a creative activity. Mm -hmm. Acid-free, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't degrade the image. Okay, so it's uh, Elmer's washable school glue we're using. 
and it will get it out of your hair. <laughs> and little bitty uh, scissors. I mean, it's a good thing to uh, kind of blow out the cobwebs, definitely. Oh. Just biting at the bit. Well, I mean, I have to, I have to keep our online audience also. Oh, interesting. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah. Ah, yes. I mean, they're they're not live tonight because they're stuck doing them live, but. a nice picture of Susan. I should have kept it. She's going to be mad. <laughs> I can tell now. She's going to be mad at you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I, so if I never speak to you again. Well, that'll be nothing new. took Susan's hand and put it in another place. This is Susan's hand on the milk. She's got milk. And no, I didn't. I didn't take this part. Okay. Just let the record reflect. I didn't take that part. Brandon um, movies that have the great scenes. One is called um, uh, White Tower, and the other one is is uh, Bull Durham with Kevin Costner. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So for mine, now I have this guy that's being worked on, except I didn't show his working, the guy that's working on him, but his feet are hanging out there. And then he's thinking about nourishment. And, right. And there's Susan, and there's the sun, and there's the flower. Okay. So... <clears throat> okay, I'm going to quit. Okay.
unveil the questions with the group. Okay. We can hold off until you, until you're ready. Okay, so I've got nourishment, I've got anima, I've got what's on the man's mind. <laughs> Such a profound thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this Nobody is, can ever figure that out. Nobody's going to ever figure that, that one out. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> I guess I'm supposed to, I don't know how to do that. How am I going to get this onto my car? Well, I don't work the right oh, it's fine. Um, so you, you know the dimension of the card by the frame. So if you want to use the exact knife and cut within the frame, yeah. you get this, right? And then you'll end up you know, with the, the collage being this, you know, matching. So do you have it all pasted? Yeah, it's okay. tacked down. But okay. Let's say it's tacked. Okay, so then I think this is probably the best way to trace within. Okay. Cool. No right or wrong way in sold college. Okay. I was considering putting this hot pepper in, but I decided not to. <laughs> Next decision. Well, I really, I really didn't have enough room for it, so. So that's the interesting thing. Oh. You know, the, um, the size of the card, you know, was determined mm -hmm. through a process, and. Um, do you do much larger ones too? Well, you can, but the idea with this size is that if you move into creating those categories or suites, then you can do things where you um, color code or somehow code the back of each suite mm -hmm. or suit, I should say. Sure. Right, and so you turn the images to the bottom so that your code is showing. And so then if you want to pick within or across suits, you know, you're just working with your code, right. and you're randomly choosing your actual card, you know, and then you can do things to read the cards together. Um, you can introduce cards to the deck. Uh, you know, there's wow, a number of different ways. Yeah, it's interesting. It, it yeah. definitely uh, stimulates the, the psyche, no doubt. Yeah, and then, you know, there can yeah, be journaling you. after the reading. Let me give you these oh, okay. back, because those are still good. Okay. But you're welcome to any, so... Don't, don't hesitate to hold on to some. Uh, well, that, that's right, I, okay. because I, I wish I had time to do mm. this yeah. regularly, but... Right. <laughs> uh, but actually, my my artistic thing is is the is calligraphy these days. Mm, right. right. to learn how to write different attempts but this is all trying to connect to my creativity <clears throat> So lately, 
the class I've been taking is called copper plate. And so this is a different style of calligraphy that I've been working on. I'm still not a master yet, but I'm having fun learning it. Yeah, but I, actually, it's it's surprisingly easier than you think. I mean, for like this bill, yeah, those, that's basically just having the right kind of pen. And of course, you have to understand how they want you to structure the structure the letter. But did you ever hear of an idea called the line of universal beauty? Yeah. We can. Okay. Well, that's a that's an idea in this copper plate learning that I'm doing. The line of universal beauty. And uh, it's basically a 55 degree line um, with a narrow part, a wide part, and a narrow part. So Bill has brought me this essay, uh, which is very nice. How did you find this? Because it, this looks like it was a like a separate publication or something. Did you find it on Amazon? I mean, there's going to be a reason for it. Huh? Did you find this on Amazon? Uh, I read about it by reading Barbara Hanna. Oh. I think, I think that's where it was. God, it was over a month ago, so I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I go through a lot of books. Like <laughs> so it's a short review of Dr. Young's article, Redemption Ideas in Alchemy. He gave a presentation, and those are that's basically um, somebody's notes. Oh. Yeah, Esther Harding's notes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay, it's not Barbara Hanna. Okay. Yeah. I've been reading so much Barbara Hanna. Lost track. Yeah, it's uh, interesting how how he attracted all these women who uh, you know, spent their spent their lives writing about what he was thinking. Well, the nice right. thing, I'm uh, reading one by Barbara okay. Hanna now, Sweet. and yeah. she yeah. writes yeah. about um, okay. Beautiful. Anima Animus, um, but it's, it's from the Logos point of view. Really? And so she's writing, she's, that's, she says that's what he's doing. She wants to show it from the Eros okay. point of view. Uh -huh. And so that's what her book I'm reading now is. And what, what's the book called? Animus. <laughs> huh. It's a two volume. Are we at a good place where Interesting. we have our card assembled? Yes, but I like the chicken with a couple of feathers in the hmm. Well, keep those. I can see your card. All right, I'm done. You can do. It's done as I'm I'm sure it's not to get Okay. That's good. Good. Okay, so if we can come back okay. to the table then. Okay, let's let's show the results. So, here's this is mine. You've been seeing it developing for what it's worth. I have basically four images in this. This was part of this picture. Can I show your collage, Bill? Oh, sure. Like uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so this is what Bill came up with. Autistic, how did you know? Did it show? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. So he's got these two little girls here. That's, 
No. No, that's one thing I didn't think of. Yeah. Yep. I have some more, Nancy. Okay, this has been a very interesting exercise. Because it, because it, it is, in a way, it's like a, a divination technique. Hmm. Well, hold on, because we still have the questions. Well, and the questions will, will oh, flesh that out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. Where'd mine go? Here's yours. <laughs> No fly this time. You had a fly? Yeah. I was going to put it in there. Pen. Okay, pen. Yep. Okay. What do you need? Here's. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's a good uh -huh. one. Okay, thank you. Don't want you to lose that. Great. Right. Did you find trash right So. Meanwhile, Sandy is using an old telephone book so that when you're slicing the yep. images, they, it doesn't slice through, but onto the table. And then she's also got, is this a purpose-built thing? No. This is a self-healing cutting board. Uh -huh. I had a big one, so I just... I see. And my husband cut it into four. The self-healing? Yeah, cool. so it doesn't end up it with hurt, gouges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes nice. back together. It's it comes magic. back together. Yeah. Wow. wow. <clears throat> That's super cool. I yeah. know. That's super cool. <laughs> it's like that, um, That's a, that wow. the Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> it like, comes back into one form. Right. <laughs> so okay. can we see your your collage, Nancy? Sure. Oh, yes. Wow. Interesting. Your collages pieces together. Yeah. Okay. So what you can do is you can cut with this within the frame. Oh, I see that. And you'll Here, end let me up uh, having the right dimensions. Some trash okay. put together so that you don't have to get it later. There you go. So if anybody can find a clear what, a cap, a clear cap for one of the exacto oh, knives that was Sure. Needed. Let's look on the floor. That's sometimes where they go accidentally. All right, you've already discussed mine, right? <laughs> no. No. We have not. That seems to be my thing tonight. I can't reveal the them until everyone's ready. Okay. Okay, Brendan, you got one minute. <laughs> All right, analysis, huh? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> I've heard um, there's a facilitator out there who feels that if you just make the collage but you don't read it, it's like cooking a fine meal but not eating it. You're really not getting right. the full right. benefit. Well, I said they like I was in a restaurant, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, I don't know where a clear plastic thing would have obviously oh, you're supposed to yours. write some more? Yeah. Oh, okay. You yeah. came in with it, right? Yeah. And we're oh. just looking for a plastic pack for the knife. And I'm giving you each one of the plastic sleeves. Oh, here it is. Oh. What's that? Okay. For the Five, knife. Okay. Oh, oh. So you can put your card in the sleeve so it's protected. Oh, that's okay. And um, All right. you can put it in so that when you fold over the top flap, right. that ends up being in the back. Back side. Mm -hmm. 
Um, buying. I do have ideas for maybe going to like Michael's to the framing department and seeing if they, you know, haven't already given away their scraps. Mm -hmm. You uh -huh. know, that might fit in the size just to help with the recycling. Right. Yeah. And keep the costs down, you know, a little right. bit. Right. That's the other kind of side benefit is but doing the, something with all these images. The people that teach you the, the facilitator mm -hmm. thing sell these yes. sleeves? Right, the sleeves, the cards, the frames. I see. Um, and the facilitator meaning like what, what, what Sandy's doing. You're the facilitator. Sure. Right, so okay. there's an organization that puts on training oh. by experienced facilitators themselves okay so uh, like in September I went to a place in New York State where my trainer who's a facilitator you know trained I think we were like eight or nine right. people it was intensive three and a half day training where we you know learned the background learned um, you know a lot of the concepts did made our own cards, read them, right. learned about um, just listening to someone who's doing the reading. Okay. Um, you know all things that go on. And and you're being trained to help <coughs> to facilitate so that I can walk you through the process. Uh huh. And, and um, not in like a therapy around. session. No, like not, in the, no, not right. no. Okay, no. It's not therapy. Like. It's just. A way to get some insight. I mean, but that's that's a commitment and time to spend three days in Yeah. Park. Oh yeah, it was, it was very huge. intense. Uh -huh. It was emotionally draining. <laughs> we I came back. I guess you weren't the only one with anima issues. We really all felt that. There's we like not have five or six people in this, and day. all of them are women. Right, your brain is full. <laughs> really needed to uh -huh. decompress and get oriented to, you know, this other way of living. Right. acknowledge <laughs> right. my anima issues. And, um, it was really <laughs> great. And you know, we heard all about your anima issues. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, well, what about the colors? What are you get the colors? Uh, he needs a sleeve. S O U L, right. so collide. Right. Okay. And um, I don't know that they may be incorporated. I don't know uh -huh, the uh -huh. type of organization. Well, okay. Okay. Cover um, essentially, well, the cover the sort of holds the surface. Yeah, I'll hold it together. It's easier to see. Met the founder. Okay. What do you do? It, just put it on and peel something off. All. all right. No, you just they open it up. They join together. You peel to that off when you're ready to stick it. What you want to do is yeah. plastic. Yeah, the founder passed away so a few years ago. You're going to want to. The publishers are maintaining the put business. Put the, the front facing this incredible, way. Incredible, very dense that and yeah. confused <laughs> website. website. You're going to take that flap over website. the back. Yeah, you know, okay. So there's yeah. so many resources for, you know, just individuals or facilitators to share. You know, there's online communities. Can I close this? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, great. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Great. <laughs> it's really yeah. incredible. So you, you, you haven't really started to market yourself doing this? Right. So I'm watching everybody else's phone. Yeah. Well, this okay. is good, okay. You want to glue that spot? Yeah, so we that's why this any. is a great opportunity to get, you know, more practice and also to learn from oh, you your go. insights. Because I think besides... The reading, you know, then there's the other side, which is which one? putting it uh, together with yeah. all that you know. Yeah. You know, but um, I think the focus now, we should just be on you individually. Oh, you're going to write. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have everybody getting the sleeves on. Let me peel this off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's it pretty. Reusable, so if you needed to add mm -hmm. to the card, you can oh. do that. Sandy, I love it. Yeah. Great. So here are the questions. This is Brandon. There is a typo, oh, yeah. but there, please There's a little anima <laughs> Can we correct the spelling? <laughs> You're welcome to. <laughs> I know, I couldn't believe that, like 40 copies. Wow. Okay. okay. Thank you. So now what we're doing is called reading the card. And we want to consider um, really how the card got put together and for what reason. Mm -hmm. So soul collage is, um, the big message is really 
Um, if you can hold on just a second. Um, I, I just, just want to give you the, the okay. typo. <laughs> <laughs> give you the background. Yep. So so collage is about identifying the many parts that make us up. Mm -hmm. right. So there's the whole you know one and many theory, and um, it plays out really nicely when the founder came up with the term of netter as being the um, name of the energy that may come forward. And apparently that came from an ancient Egyptian term. And she liked it because um, it conjures up the idea of a net, meaning you know, you're holding many pieces, but it is one energy. And um, there's more to that that I can't think of right now. But so what we're looking to do is identify what netter is contained within this card. And to do that, we think of um, another part of ourselves being in the card. So we want to step into that and ask it, who are you? And we answer the question with, I am one who. Okay. And um, just in the interest of time, I'll just put this out there. Normally what we do is one person um, is reading their card and the other person is scribing so that um, the person doesn't have to think about sure. tracking everything that's coming to mind. They just think it. But mm -hmm. since we have this recorded, if people are yep. open to that, you know, we don't have to worry too much about describing. Um, so if you feel comfortable reading your card, you know, to us, or if you want to make notes to read it later, oh, um, that's fine. But essentially, you're at, you're looking at the card and you're putting yourself in it and saying, "Who are you?" you know, um, answering with, I am one who, you know, it's essentially, what is the purpose of the card? What is it bringing up? And the phrasing, you know, has been crafted. So um, I don't know if anyone feels comfortable. I'll just go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your card and Hold say... Hold your card up real quick. Let us study in a minute. Hmm. Mm. I'm just transfixed by the Susan Singer movie. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm, trans I'm transfixed by the hand. What is the hand? Oh, it's on milk. Oh, there yeah, you go. It's her hand. It's her hand, yeah. Would yeah. you bring it down here so I can see it just a second? And, uh, so besides the first part, which was, you know, uh, sifting uh, through like the images like and the not thinking about it, but just choosing right. what's choosing you, right. essentially. Um, mm. So you want to do the same with okay. the questions. So you're just, you know, keeping yourself open to whatever comes up when you ask the question, who are you? Okay. So, and, but I'm referring to my image. Right. So who is this part of you? Who is this facet okay. of yourself? So, um, so the trick is just whatever comes to mind. I'm just a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got a song coming. Is that in C? Who <laughs> right? loves, loves beautiful women? I dream about them all the time. Um, I think of them in part as, as nourishing, nourishing my soul, maybe. Can you try the I am one who phrase? I am one who. I, I, am, uh, I am one who appreciates the beauty of women. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Got me through mine. Sure. <laughs> want to hold it up while I say it? Yep. Do you want to? Look, you might want to look at it just. To yeah, I can see it. While I'm okay. Going. Oh, sure. I am one who <clears throat> wants to give pleasure to women, but is not sure it's happening. Is sure it's all about growth, mm. but not sure that the pleasure is. You know, mutual or actually, it's real pleasure. Okay. Hold it up there so we can see down here. You like cute women, don't you? Apparently. <laughs> this is a woman thing here. You got a bunch yeah, of guys. Well, we're, we're guys. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got to do with us? <laughs> we're born to beat each other I'm up just and, a man. and admire women. <laughs> Does anyone else want to read the first question? So who are you? Right, looking at the card. Who am I? Okay. 
Oh, oh we, what are we doing? Oh, we can, we're, we're, we can show right. the viewer are we uh, what it is. And right. we're, we're showing the viewer. If you're comfortable, and, you don't have and to. you can see it in, in the viewer. Okay. okay so. so who are you? Who you am I? I am one who is constantly searching. I am one who is looking for new adventure. I am one who is the guide and is guided by... I am looking for the ring. You are what now? Looking for the ring. Oh, looking for the ring. There it is. Okay, very Beautiful, Nancy. Yes. Very well done. Okay. Bill. Cool. I can interpret it all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where to for go. Sure. Do I go ahead? Those are my three kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> Uh, so who are you? I am one who. I am one who feels is connected mm. to a cosmos, and you see that sort of dark spot in the center, which is sort of the eye of the cosmos, and radiating out of that are lots of eyes looking to either side, or if you look at the monkey, that's a guy, by the way, that monkey's a guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's contemplating, right? And then you've got the Indian women, um, Hindu, Hin I don't know what they are, but. Mm -hmm. They're here, these, what, these are the women? Yeah, at the base. And yeah. then there's two women looking out. Right. And the only ones looking out at you are the two in the, on the far uh, left corner, the bottom left corner. And so you've got this cosmos looking out at you, and in my world, um, it's like the uh, there's this animal instinct, this animal understanding, but that's contemplating. But what actually looks out at the world comes through uh, uh, through the feminine, because everything about that's feminine. And there's also another monkey behind the Hindu women. So he's coming up behind them, uh, maybe oh, yeah. listening to them, and so uh, it's uh, mm. it's about um, you know it's gnostic. <laughs> it's experience, experiential. Yeah, well, in the sense, the feminine is where you know Sophia. All creation comes from Sophia. Right. And um, so yeah, that's just me. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. All right. Then the second question is, what do you have to give me? So looking at the card. What do you have to give me? Right. What do you have to give me? What you know? What is? I think of it like the advice. Give you or give anyone? Give yourself. So I'll you're asking yourself. another part of yourself. What do you have to give me? Okay. So you're asking the image. Mm -hmm. What do you have to give me? And you're not asking what are you obliged to give me, you're asking what do you have actually, what can you give me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what you can give me still is life. And this shows I'm still alive even though I have all this gray hair. Right? Something like that. Interesting. And energy. Psychic energy, mm. the sun pushing up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I have to give you, my background is about a million penguins, and I have to give you the fact that I'm just like all the other penguins, <laughs> uh, but I don't know. But not knowing is growing. Not knowing is still okay, it's how we grow. Nice. Good. Can you waddle across the snow like that? <laughs> 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 All right. <clears throat> Say it again. The what do you have to give me? What do you have to give me? Um, I have to give me the understanding that uh, I, um, I uh, understanding comes to me beyond um, logos. Beyond it comes to me through arrows. It comes to me. And your understanding, the most genuine understanding comes um, um, beyond um, 
rationality. Mm. There you go. All right. Just to put it in crude terms. <laughs> so it doesn't have to mean like only one one part of this image can give something to you. It's not like the whole thing, right? No, you have to synthesize. I'm not interpreting yeah. it. Interpreting it. So it's just. Okay. I'm overanalyzing. Right. Well, yeah. why don't you start with that part that works for you, and then if mm -hmm. it leaps on to something else, go for it. If not, stop there. Yep. And we'll fill it in for you. Or <laughs> what's also um, suggested is that you keep the card up, you know, so you can see it throughout mm -hmm. your day, throughout your week, mm -hmm. or you, you know, pull a card and look at it each morning, yeah. see what you get, you know. Mm -hmm. So it could build or evolve. Mm -hmm. okay. You may end up with an image that needs to go on top of it, you mm -hmm. know, like it can just What really can you give me? Grow. You can give me companionship and loyalty. Mm -hmm. That's what you can give me. Mm -hmm. Definitely that's looks it. like that's what you want. I got to see it again. Mm -hmm. Since, I, since, since I'm a dog guy. Look at that little owl. That's cool. And insight yeah. and wisdom and uh, a little broken egg. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we, so, we uh, have about yeah, that's 13 like minutes okay. gods we have to be out. <laughs> so we could just <laughs> talk about the last two <laughs> questions. <laughs> so the third so question is, okay, here we we're go. just going to kind of <clears throat> zoom <throat> through this, but you're welcome to, you know, bring the this wisdom, home. And sort of like wisdom is looking keep very working neat through and these guys are the guards. So okay. then the third question is, what do you want or need from me? So what can you ask this other facet? So, so we're asking the card, what do you need from me? Right, but you're essentially the card. Oh, you're mm -hmm. the card. You're the card. So the card is saying to me, to you. what do you need to, right. from yeah. me? So do you have an obligation of some sort on some level, or do you have to give yourself on some sort? Or do you have a need of some sort? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a lack? What or do you want something? or need from me? Okay, so for for me, um, I always need my soul nourished, so that's what I'm going mm. Right? And attention from women always gets nourished with my soul. Like <laughs> <laughs> we could have introduced this guy in high school and still been missing. <laughs> <laughs> Only more so. Yeah. <laughs> or more aware. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Confidence. Mm. I need confidence. I need to know it's okay. I need to know that not knowing is okay. Mm. And I just need confidence. Mm. Yep. So all you need to know is all these beautiful women, they're, they're just as lacking in confidence as you are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And then the last question is just sort of. Do you want to do your two? No, it's okay. We're, yeah. we're running. Is there any anything else you have to say to me? So, you know, anything else that hasn't been addressed through the questions? In the card, is there anything else the card needs to say to you? Right. Anything else you have to say to me? So, any other wisdom that's coming up that you didn't get to articulate? Mm hmm. Well. I seem happy. So. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Those two women. I always I like uh, happy women. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I like happy girls, little girls too. I like happy little boys, but little girls really delightful. Aren't mm. they? Yeah. Well, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I had when my daughters and their friends were mm. giggling in the back seat. I was just like ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And if you know about NLP, I used to just. I used to anchor that feeling when the right. little girls were. <laughs> yeah, it's neat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's um, so. Maurice Chevalier. Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> we can all do it in French. <laughs> so, where's your collage? Where uh, would be well, your I have collage? A, I would love to see one. She, oh, yeah. she has lots of them. So what else do you have to the say The other to me? Uh, kinds of cards that you can do are interesting too. They are called transpersonal cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those would be cards that you don't read. They're just part of the deck. You know, they're just um, there representing one is source, 
one is witness. This is my witness card. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm still looking for my source card, but I may have found part of it tonight. Mm -hmm. And then another one is your soul essence. So, this you know. It's almost like doing tarot cards. To your, to your core. Yeah. From you know, that little spark that started it all. What was that? Put these cards out and do a reading. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's my cool. witness card. Yeah, you could almost um, um, you could almost do a full tarot deck mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on these things. Right. Yeah, and you can get into the archetypes and wow. you know, like I said, um, organizing into the suits. There's oh, companions. All archetypal. Companions yeah. and committee is another is super suit. Super cool. Yeah. yeah. And then I um, was encouraged, or we all were encouraged by our trainer to make a card for the founder. Okay. And um, her name is Cena Frost, and she has passed away, but she started years ago. Um, I'm not very well versed, but she was um, in a program, like a three year program, with Jean Houston and some other folks. And Jean Houston, the. Uh the psychic in that issue? Um, no. No, sh maybe I'm, I'm putting the name together wrong. Um, well, maybe I'm just thinking of someone else. Okay, yeah, so uh, this person and her husband went on to create some foundation of the mind or something, and, mm -hmm. you know, more than I understand, but, um, <laughs> so it, um, so the card ended up being a gift that Cena gave each of the participants. Mm -hmm. And what she did was, um, there were like 115 people in the program. Wow. And she created a small collage for thinking of each person <clears throat> and gave them out. And she got such a great response where people really felt that she captured <coughs> them. And it was insightful <coughs> and meaningful. Oh and. My goodness. Mm -hmm. And so sure, she yeah. worked from that to develop this product, essentially. Mm -hmm. But it was through, you know, just, you like know, that. having different groups coming at, you know, her house or going to theirs and building it up into, you know, coming up with the process and the name and um, well, I th I the think idea, the, the size. Yeah, I think the process is very... Uh, therapeutic. Mm. Yeah. Um, right. It is not yeah. therapy, but it is therapeutic. Yeah. The yeah. point well, is, our first impressions, the, the, the first impressions we make of anybody are visual. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine her sitting there with her 150 people getting 150 first impressions mm -hmm. and then resonating with images and being able to put something oh, together. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That spoke to the first I'm impression. Sure we could all do that. Right, yeah. right. So just like you chose images that mm -hmm. called to you, if she had the intention of one particular person and then went through her images, she could bring together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, yeah. the images that made sense for that person. So, so it's really neat to hear that it started out as a gift, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it ends up being something that you can use for yourself. You could certainly create a card with the intention of giving it to someone, but um, the guidelines are pretty clear that the card that I make for myself only has meaning to me. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. might be able to come up with something, but it just really wouldn't fit exactly yeah. because right. it wasn't made right. by you or for you. But can we comment on it or you would rather not? For instance, I, I would like to comment mm -hmm. on the card you just gave as the witness card. Okay. Where's that? Which yeah, it, it really goes to the how people feel. with a little girl feel. between the two windows and the background is all the oh. constellations of the stars and stuff. Oh, didn't see it. Okay. And uh, so on the one window it's full of clouds and sunshine but it's brilliant. Mm. And the background there's the moon and everything else. To me, that's just like a little girl you mm -hmm. stepping out into the great unknown and expecting mm -hmm. beauty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having your ideals and yeah. Um, and right. I need to read up more on that, but I want to say that it's also just you being received. There's no judgment, yes. and your life can unfold at any point in time. Mm -hmm. You know. Sure. And um, yeah, it's really you know getting. Um, getting to know the, the three transpersonal cards and the types, 
you know, and yeah. then seeking out images that seem to fit. So mm -hmm. it's a little different from what you mm -hmm. did tonight, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you're still waiting to see what is really going to mm -hmm. be that card. And then you, you end up really feeling so strongly about these, you know, like sure. that is like such a special card oh, for me. Oh, God, I love it. Yeah. You know, I so. I talk about that um, card myself, especially the open window onto the cosmos. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. I mean, and they all become like, you know, best friends. Right. Yeah, yeah. And people have, you know, like decks and. What are the transpersonal categories? Um, source, soul essence. Okay. And witness. Okay. And like I said, so those aren't really red. They're just mm -hmm. put out there, and they're just kind of the grounding cards to the whole right. process. Well, and, and <coughs> I think that these work very much like the Turo works, which is that it, it causes things that are unconscious to you mm -hmm. at any given time to get loosened up mm -hmm. so that they can look at things differently. Right, right. So yeah. then if you... You might were, dream about them. We, mm. we all might dream about mm -hmm. these cards tonight. Yeah. Right, Please or I you could look at it again and... <laughs> sometimes people... I know what you're about. Like, sometimes know. people don't even realize that something is in the card. Yeah. You know, really? and then it becomes so clear and it's so shocking. Right. And, um, you know, it just can be so meaningful. So I guess it comes down to you being open and letting go is really the work to allow, you know, to what needs here. to be given a voice. Yeah. And I just figured out, like, two weeks ago in talking with my therapist just about the process, right. how it isn't really that, like, one of these images had to be here. It just happened that, like, my subconscious found you know, mm -hmm. a name mm -hmm. for what needed to come up. Right. So, you know, right. you can also think about that these images are here and you pick them and, you know, but the other side is that if you can allow yourself to have the voice to let it come up, then, you know, really how it looks isn't really mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah you're just trying to give it the voice, yes. give it the yeah. opportunity to have the yeah. voice. The giving the energy there. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, well, we so. have to clean up and... Yeah. And so thank you up. very much. So I really... Very, 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 very good. Oh, that was great. Thank, thank you, you so much. So